but it seems that we're none too keen on Europe. A recent poll suggested that more than half of us want to leave the EU altogether, and so it's within that context that parties like UKIP are hoping to gain ground. Of course, last time round, UKIP did very well in 2004. They came third ahead of the Liberal Democrats in terms of the populist vote, and they gained an MEP pace here in the West Midlands. And so other parties have seen UKIP's success. They've also seen this anti-European feeling in the country, and I think that probably goes some way towards explaining why you'll see so many Eurosceptic parties on your ballot papers come June the 4th. With 27 countries and almost as many languages, there are a fair few ways to say no if you're a citizen of the European Union. But is it all Europop or Eurotrash? Those who love the EU as it stands had better look away now. If, however, you're after a party that'll say no to the way it's run, no to the Constitution, or if you just want to say no, no, no to the existence of the European Union itself, then you really are spoilt for choice this year. First up, the most established and successful of the bunch, the UK Independence Party. Here's one of their West Midlands candidates setting off from Birmingham on a fact-finding mission to the European Parliament. What we're saying is that people need to have a say. We've been promised to say by government and it's not, they've not delivered. UKIP will be giving that people the option to say no to the European Union. UKIP's certainly a notable presence where she's going. Last time round, they won more votes than the Liberal Democrats and secured more than 17% of the vote in the Midlands. It seems that all of that isn't convincing all of you, though. A YouGov poll earlier this year showed that 16% of people questioned wanted Britain to leave the EU altogether. And in a survey commissioned by the BBC this month, as many as 55% of those polled thought Britain should leave the EU but maintain close trading links. So what do the people I asked in Birmingham's Brindley Place think? Well, I have a few people here with me who will be competing for those votes. You join me in Centenary Square here in Birmingham City Centre. And I'm joined by Mike Natress, who's the UKIP MEP for the West Midlands, and also Dave Nellis, who's Coventry Councillor, and also leading that party that we saw there, No to EU, Yes to Democracy. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. Now, Mike Natras, I'll, I'll start with you. It seems that you've got competition this time round. You used to be the sole voice, really, well, didn't you? Our support comes from all three major political parties, and at, at the European elections, they lend us their votes to get us out of the EU. I'm not expecting that our vote will be diminished this time, because the Say No campaign that we ran last time was very popular. And we got 12 MEPs elected, and I'm sincerely expecting the same people to vote for us again. But this time there are a lot of Say No campaigns, it seems. I mean, you know, if you look at the BNP, they have a similar point of view in terms of wanting to withdraw from Europe, and they've been doing well in the Midlands, certain parts of the Midlands, in terms of local elections. Are you worried that they could dilute your support? We're not a racist party. We don't believe in that philosophy. We just want to get out of the European Parliament to make politics in Westminster. Now, if we're going to divide it before we leave, that is no good at all. The politics should be back in Westminster. EU makes 75% of our law now. That shouldn't happen. It should all be made in Westminster. But in terms of trade, more than half of the trade that Britain does is with the European Union. That's quite right. an important point. And it's, a, and it's at a deficit. We're actually uh, importing more from Europe than we're selling to Europe. So it's not the panacea that people put it forward as. Mike the statistics on that are incorrect because the exports through Rotterdam are counted in as an, e an EU export. Well, according export. to the EU website, which yeah, I checked course, yeah. last night, 56.9% Yes. of UK exports go to yes, EU Yes, because they go countries. through Rotterdam to the rest of the world and they count them into Europe but not out. So it's one of those statistics that's manipulated by the EU. Nonetheless, it is important to maintain those trading links in a time of recession, if, if nothing else. If we left the EU tomorrow, they still trade with us. That is not the question. The problem is political domination. They're making our regulations, they're telling us what to do. It's got nothing about trade. We voted to be in there on a trade basis. What we've got is political domination. We could leave tomorrow and do the same trade, no problem at all. We've been here in the week that uh, Gordon Brown visited to hear a speech from the leader of the UK Independence Party, Nigel Farage, a South East MEP. The speech, he says, voters sent him here five years ago to make. And as usual, he pulled no punches. Shame on you, Prime Minister, for doing that. You have devalued democracy in our country. You have devalued the trust that voters have got in you as a British Prime Minister.
The Conservatives and UKIP are the South East dominant parties with 60% of the votes, 7 out of 10 of the seats. But even so, they're a small force here at the Parliament, so they have to form coalitions with like-minded MEPs to get their voice heard. The Parliament often plays host to visiting dignitaries. This week, Gordon Brown, the head of the G20 summit, which gave several of our locally elected representatives a chance for a big speech. Conservative Dan Hannan got himself thrown out of the party that's the traditional home for British Tories, the European People's Party, the EPP, but as an independent, managed to land some hard punches on the Prime Minister. I've long accepted that you're pathologically incapable of accepting responsibility for these things. It's that you're carrying on willfully worsening our situation, wantonly spending what little we have left. Some saw it as rather un-British, having a go at your own PM on foreign soil. But he was joined by Union Jack-waving chief Eurosceptic UKIP's Nigel Farage. Your government has apologised for the Amritsar massacre. You've apologised for slavery. You've apologised for virtually everything. Will you please apologise for what you did as British Chancellor and then perhaps we might just listen to you. Thank you. This is the Louise Weiss building. It's the parliamentary meeting place and it's impressive. There's over 2,650 offices inside. The bill is also sizeable. It costs £200 million a year, but it's only used 49 days a year, so that means it costs £4 million a day to run. Nigel Farage is a UKIP MEP for the South East. He's also the UKIP party leader. In his school days, he was a Tory party activist. More recently, he used to flout the smoking ban here at the EU Parliament, but he's given up the cigarettes and he's taken up the pipe. When 20% of the electors in the southeast of England voted to put me here in 2004, they did so wanting somebody who was a voice of opposition. Okay? And I was able yesterday with the British Prime Minister to stand up and say, shame on you, what you have done is disgusting, you were voted promising to give us a referendum on the constitutional treaty and you turned your back on us, you've lied to us and you've devalued democracy in Britain. And I think that most people who ticked the box for me last time round would have been very pleased that I did that. So you came here as the anti-politician. A lot of people would say, well, after 10 years here, you must have gone a bit native. Uh, no, I haven't gone native at all. Uh, but what I have done is my views changed a bit. I used to think that provided that Britain got itself out of this awful mess, that was fine. I now take a much broader view. I now think that the EU is not just bad for Britain, it's bad for the other countries of Europe too. And so I've been very happy, in the course of, of this term of the Parliament, to, to work in the French referendum, to work in the Irish referendum, to try and get a, you know, a broad-based opposition across the whole of the European continent. So is there a deal to be done with David Cameron? I mean, at what stage do you speak to him? If the Conservative Party, or the Labour Party for that matter, were to contest the next general election saying, vote for us, Put us into number 10 and we will give you, the British people, a free and a fair referendum so that you can decide your future rather than career politicians in Westminster. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's the moment at which I'd be very happy for that election for UKIP to do a deal. And what happens to your party? If you say, well, that's my objective sealed? And what happens no, to you? No, no. I mean, listen, once, once we've got ourselves out of this ghastly mess of European Union, there's a lot of other things to fight for, namely the intrusion of the state into our lives. And UKIP believes in a low-tax economy, UKIP believes in less government, UKIP believes in more power for local government. There are many things to campaign on, much to do, uh, but the great thing is unless we get the ability to govern our own country back, then all of it, frankly, is worthless. To find out more about who we are and what we stand for, go to the UK Independence Party website at www.ukip.org.